Do you remember bulk loading film? Yeah. Where we had giant was, bulk oh, loaders who would oh, buy yeah. you know, they're like triex and hundred foot rolls and it would come, you know, in a metal container, oh, which was really good for ashtrays and other absolutely. storage, uh, wrapped in tape, and you had to go in a dark room and you had a, a you put it in this loader and you kind of threaded it through the loader and then uh, it was kind of had a lot of felt in there so that it was light tight and you would tape it to a, a roll, snap together the cartridge, you know, reel in uh, 36 Absolutely. exposures, and then you know, kind of had to take a scissors and cut it, and you would just bulk load this stuff because it was a lot cheaper than buying rolls of film. Oh, it's a lot cheaper. And um, God, I, can't, I can remember those days. You know what we should do? We're going to do an episode where we do a roll off. We can do that today. We don't have the we don't have the tanks and. Oh my God! You brought those. Back, and then we're here for the third episode of On the Rocks. And today we're in the car room of the Stutz building. There's a lot of photographers today that have been brought up only in the digital side of things. And they don't realize, some of them, that there were cameras before digital. So we kind of went through the used department at Roberts and we picked up just a couple cameras. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the fun that we used to have with cameras that shot with film. Phil, I'm gonna let you kick it off with this. The Canon AE-1. This was very popular back in the 80s. We sold a lot of these cameras. Um, actually, this is the very first camera I ever had, Canon AE-1. Um, use it in high school. Uh, not the A1 program. Is this program? No, this is just I, I was regular poor. A1. I had the Spotmatic. Well, I did know. too. What are you gonna and do? And I'm a Mia C-Corp. What are you, you gonna, gonna do? do? Yeah, well, then I saved up all my pennies, traded this in, I got the Minolta Maxim 7000 when it first came oh, out. Oh my God, really? Yeah. Autofocus was the first thing I was. <laughs> was it actually autofocus one? Oh, yeah. It really yeah, quick, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It was like 87, I think. Uh, that thing was, man, you could just hit the button and it, <laughs> It's still very, very popular today. I still throw a little bit of black and white through the one I have. And uh, yeah. You we sell. A good amount of film. Yeah, it's we're really a lot more neat. now than we were just a couple of years ago. I mean, yeah. it really is starting to go I, back a little bit. The way you know, I, I hear from the forum at, on uh, Loomis Landscape Forum and others that I read that there's a lot of people just like, you know, they're moving from digital back to vinyl and really enjoying that that sound of vinyl. That's Mr. Vinyl. Yeah, I'm one of them. There's You're Mr. One of them? Vinyl. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I have a good collection. I just don't have anything to play it on. So uh, that's a problem. I know it's a problem. I'm working on it. <laughs> you know, we sell record players. <laughs> I saw the <laughs> record Mary. record players. We should put a definition of what their record player is. You know, and it's funny. Back in the film days, unlike I see in digital, cameras would last. I mean, they would last forever. But we had 36 exposures. I was I was so poor. My first trip. My, how poor were you? How poor I was we? really my, poor my, too. My first trip to Europe to study uh, Romanesque architecture. I had my Spotmatic, bought it for that trip, used, of course, and I would take my three types of film, and I'd take three shots, and then if I had to change film, I'd rewind it and make sure I left the tongue out, take out the film, write what frame I took it out this time, and put the new film out. in, and I would be putting my film rolls back. Back and forth so you could change ISO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Joey, let's talk a little bit about some of the things. On your side, you have... Look at this. This is a classic. Polaroid this was, this was the expensive one. This was the classic leather bound and a quick story. My, here, hold this. My, my sweetheart's boss didn't know how to work it. His wouldn't work. Here, your boyfriend's in the photo. Why don't you give this to him? I can't make it work. He didn't realize the battery is in the film. This is the same camera from 30 years ago. It's a film from 30 years ago. And his name is still etched in it. Yeah. Oh, wow. These were so much fun. They had, uh, 
This was, this was one of the ones you actually focused. You had a knob for a darker or lighter. Yep. A focus knob and a single lens reflex, no less. So yeah. you would just look through there, which was really weird. I didn't focus any of these. I know. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> um, and you, you could take the picture. What also was fun, and of course, we, you know, as a fine artist, I would sometimes oh, you're take... You're better at a focus. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I am. <laughs> <laughs> you would take styluses, and while this was developing, it's a soft emulsion, and you would, like, scratch in it, and you could make these, like, really cool oil painting looks yeah. and stuff like that. So anyway, these are the uh, Polaroid SX-70s. Uh, there is film for these now. Polaroid's making this. Film. I just put bought this film at Robert's today and put it in there. I mean... Yeah. Meredith bought this film today at Roberts, and <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, these are these were so much fun, and there's like a lot of them are that are in really really good shape. Polaroid also made one with a little radar that for autofocus yeah. and uh, a number of other things. But those are classics, bring back a lot a lot of memories and so forth. I, this, it was good times. On the higher end ones, really vivid memory for me when I was a kid was uh, the my father had the big. Land camera. Oh, the Polaroid right land, yeah, with the and the the smell of the coating. Coating is a, a scent that it just yeah. brings alive my youth. In one it? of our episodes, we'll try to find one of those. And it used to have a little black container with, yep. and uh, to fix the image, you you would take this and you would smear it over the image once or twice. Yeah. And it just exactly. was like, oh my God. And I'm sure it's cancerous or something at this point. You know, I, you're probably really? very dangerous oh, to sure. use. Yeah. So Polaroid, uh, you know, they did some really cool stuff and they were really ahead of their time. Um, Ed Land, who started Polaroid, um, really, you know, did some amazing stuff. The fact that you could do instant photography. I mean, it was yeah. something which, you know, it's hard to it's believe. Incredible. Now you also have these things and I'm curious what these are. <laughs> You have, what, four of them here, so you have... Roberts, PCMC. Thanks to, thanks to our leader's vision, uh, you know, rule, his rule, listen to everyone. You know, everyone has something worthwhile, listen. He got us into Kodak in the very beginning. You remember Kodak, the people that lost all of the digital market? They had yellow market. boxes. Well, these went into those Kodak big old monstrous cameras. This is a hundred... 30 megabyte 8x card. Holy cow! 8x. So I believe you have a camera that this won't take an image from. No, I mean a if single image. A, a phase one camera, just shooting even, you know, 50 or 100 megapixel cameras, you can shoot 500, 500 images in one shot. This is a one gigabyte drive for a car for a camera. Micro drive. Micro drive that has moving parts. Yeah. It's not flash. You'd be real careful with them. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I wonder if it stood up to the G test on that one. <laughs> this Lexar 160 was $550. $550, 550 for storage. Dollars. And think about what we're getting for storage today. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who would have ever thought? Next up, this is a camera that brings back some great joy and memories for me. This is the Mamiya C330. And this, I've shot more weddings with this camera. You know, it was built like... A, I bet that camera shot more weddings than any other camera. I know. It, <laughs> and it really, why it was, is because it, a lot of it was very modular. Uh, you know, you could take the lens hood off. To take the lenses off, they weren't screw mounts. They're held on by a spring clip. So to change lenses, you would... <laughs> There's a lever you have to drop. It's locked. Oh. Here, use my glasses. <laughs> Why can't you use your glasses? Here, just, you wait, do it. <laughs> wait, my, my, my glasses are 2.5s. No, I'll just, right, it's, I'd be, I'd be dead. All right, you do it. All Show right. me how the lens comes off. I do it the wrong way. I do it like this. Yeah. All right, so we, you release the spring and the lens comes off and you would walk around with these and you have two lenses. The lens at the top you would view through and a, a lens at the bottom you would take through. And it was just big neg, big negative. You had a prism finder you could also put on there. And it was really pretty cool to load up. You would have to take these 120 rolls, 12 or 24 exposure. 220 so, would be the... 220 would be 24. And uh, you had to wind it in there, get the arrows to a certain point close it and then ring it. And every time you took a shot, you had to wind it, put the thing back down, and you were focused. And this had not rotating lenses, but essentially a bellow that came out. 
And so you would focus on a ground glass, moving the lens back and forth. It was really a versatile camera. And it was built. Phil and I know well. a, Phil and I know a nice gentleman in India here that used to shoot uh, uh, basketball with twin lenses. Yeah, wow. for yeah. a long time. Probably had like a big, you know, hammerhead strobe next to it. Maybe and, uh, pro it basketball. Yeah, pro no basketball. Yeah. Then we move on. Oh, Jody, these pictures are coming out. Yeah, it was really, oh, they're awesome. <laughs> really good. Yeah. Oh my. Psychedelic uh, oh my man. heavens. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to me? We'll come back to those after they mature a little bit longer. So the next up camera is the Raleigh, or how would you say it? I Rolly. would say Rolly. Rolly. Now this camera was extremely popular and it had controls on the bottom and accessory shoe on the bottom. It was meant so that it could go in your pocket. It had a lens that would come out and you would have f-stop and shutter speed dials up front and it's just it was just so incredible to work with. And you would just kind of shoot and then wind and shoot. And you had all this controls for rewinding your film and unlocking a tripod mount and accessory shoe at the bottom. So this was really truly one of the first pocket cameras. Rolly made a huge assortment of great cameras. That's another one yep. sad like a Kodak. Mm -hmm. Where, where'd they go? Well, you know, that's unfortunately a lot of the, these cameras went that way. Now, a camera that I had in my youth that I had a lot of fun with, especially, you know, when I was, um, you know, because of secret agent movies and everything in the 70s and 80s, like 007 and everything, was this. Now, there was a couple. Minox was the one that everybody knows. Yeah. It was a uh, 16 millimeter. The Minox cocked by expanding yeah, like, it. And had little meters built into it and everything, little <laughs> shutter dials. Anyway, Minolta made one. And, you know, God bless Minolta because they did a lot of cool things. And uh, this is the Minolta 16. And you would just... Oh, so it also caught yeah. with the action. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. great. And it was so cool because I would like, when I when it was back in my young day, I was a photographer. I guess you could say I was a photographer. I was. And I would, you know, kind of go out on dates and everything and always have this camera. It was like, oh, wow, hey, let me get a snap of you enjoying your meal. Oh, Phil, you're looking good, buddy. Work it. But this was so cool. You, you could undo it. And the film came in a little cartridge. That would just drop in. And you could easily do a three by four print. Oh, God. maybe stretch Jeez. it if you were losing <laughs> lower IS though to four by six inch print. <laughs> so you know, this was pretty advanced though for the day. And you know, who would have ever, ever thought that you know we would be doing where we are? And you would just kind of put it back in like that. And um, I would break it. <laughs> like that, and you're back in business. It looks like you bought a little Minolta. <laughs> Now, <laughs> Leica cameras were also uh, pretty cool. And in front of Phil here, we have uh, Russian knockoffs. People are trading these in. And this is a, a screw mount, a Leica mount. We get everything. It's and uh, it's called what? A PED 5C with one of these lenses that collapses. Um, uh, it's got a light meter built in. So you could actually set the f-stop. So you would read the light meter and it would tell you what to set the f-stop at. And it had shutter speed dials up here. I mean, this is like I love the old light meter stuff. diffuser. Yeah, <laughs> and Yashikas great. had them. Everybody, there's a whole slew great. of people yeah. that had those out there. And um, Phil, you got the big one. What the is beast. this? The big Pano camera. Oh, remember Panos? Now on your iPhone, you take a Pano. Six seventeen. You know, that's not even that old. Those were no. It's really not that old. People using those actually. ten years ago yeah. regularly. So this would use 120 film or 220 film. 220, 120. And I think you probably had three shots, three, yeah. three shots yeah. on it. And um, the negative, you couldn't really get it printed anywhere, so you only would work with mostly contact prints. But uh, boy, you know, what a beast. And there was an auxiliary viewfinder, which would sit up on here, which they have. You know, they have these big, you know, bars here, so you didn't screw up the lens. Now they made, they made similar cameras in four different formats. Yes. This, this is, is just the biggest. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a point and shoot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then Hasselblad had the uh, the X-Pan. The X-Pan. X -Pan, that, that, that was, was, that was a, a teeny super wide. Yeah. So it's four exposures on 120 or eight exposures mm -hmm. on two. A little switch you could push on here. Finder lock. There's a level built in, a real bubble level. So this was uh, pretty sophisticated. Okay. So anyway, we just wanted to give you a real glimpse of uh, some of the things from yesteryear. Kind of nostalgic to come back to this stuff because we we were there in the film days. Well, for part of it, yeah. 
Yeah, part of it. <laughs> you were the tail end of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, we were. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, no, yeah. When I started, that's we where we did. Yeah. You know, and, you know, back then, too, we were trying to develop film so that... We, uh, we spent huge amounts of time and effort to make sure we maintained emotions right, keeping it coolers uh, that we could rotating repeat for customers yeah, repeat yeah. results yeah. it was a, a, a batch a, numbers we used to keep it, it at roberts yeah. so i started at roberts i don't know 75 years ago what is it <laughs> we had a cooler we had a cooler the newspaper the star would order their year's worth and one time we would have to inventory for the high-end shooters indianapolis was a major center for a lot we had the yeah two of the four largest studios in the country in Indianapolis, or three. It was a really big center. And we would have to keep their emulsions. As long as Kodak could supply us, or Fuji could supply us with that emulsion, they'd say, you know, how much you want to belly up to buy? And we would keep a half a year's worth of whatever the film they need for whatever customer they have. It was, it was a, a, a lot of work. The challenges of film, fluorescing, yeah. ultraviolet sensitivity, yeah. you know, yeah. the, you, you, the color dynamic range was so small, the exposure dynamic range. Well, if you were shooting transparency, it was you got to get it dead nuts on or you might as well forget it because there was no opening up shadows or recovering, no. you know, even anything in the highlight side. Of that. <laughs> there was nothing. It was, what you got was what you got. It was fun though. Yeah. And Jody, <laughs> Phil, cheers. Cheers. And to all of you, thank, thank you very you. much. We'll see you on the next episode of On the Rocks, and I'll see you on the Loomis Landscape. Here's a roll and a roll of film for you. <laughs> okay. Here's a reel and a roll of film for you, and here's a reel and a roll of film dark. for me. So we got to promise to close our eyes. Yeah, because we want to. Oh. That's a surprise. <laughs> this is fun. Oh, we're, all right. Never say we we stay on topic in this uh, little episode of ours. But here we have it. Wow. Do we have a scissors? We might, we might have to cut the end of the roll off. Are we going? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kevin. <laughs> this is going to be a blast. Well, who wants to place some bets? Who's going to be first? You, are you confident? Do you think you can do it? If like, I win, no, we can wear black no. shirts from now on. There's no way. Oh, no, no. It's been, wait, wait, I mean, it's been since high school. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wear a black shirt. You got like a little Pillsbury Doughboy. A Pillsbury, camera. yeah. So anyway, what we're going to do is uh, We'll pull out the film, tear it off, and we'll see who can load it up quickest. And this was a trick, because what you had to do in the dark, you had to put it under a little clip which is in there, and then you had to have the reel in your right hand with the spokes facing it's out. It's funny, it's a, it's a motion I remember. I, don't, I know, it's, it's like, I really remember, remember, and you, you would just reel it, and then of course you would run your fingers along the top, and as long as you couldn't feel the edges yeah, of the film. Make sure nothing was touching. Yeah, because sometimes, um, you know, if the film was touching and yeah. didn't get developed, and you're basically reeling shots and stuff, so. You get um, yelled at. And did you get? You don't yelled? get paid. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no wonder you were poor, you weren't very good film roller. <laughs> so before we get back to our cameras, let's do this. So. Who's gonna like call it out? I'll say ready, set. We'll open up your film so we're all at the same spot. Everybody got their film in their hand? I have to do it with eyes open, boys. I don't uh, know. Oh, well. <laughs> I need a little drink before this always helps. <laughs> drink before you go in the dark rooms. Oh, well, I don't think I need it. I should be able just to just tear it right off, I think. Let's see. Okay. If we need it, then we'll figure it out. Okay, so what are you looking at? I'm waiting if you say go. Set. Go. Okay. I'm. Ready to go. We have to properly curve the film. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm doing such a bad job. Look oh. how bad I did. <laughs> it's on, That's but look how bad I did. Can you feel the edges? Yeah. God, this is hard. This is, this is the equivalent of yeah. loading your SD card in a computer. Yeah, Jody, I wouldn't have gotten paid on this one. I lose because I did a really bad job, but I got it on. It'll, it'll, it'll process. <laughs> yeah, mine, well, maybe mine will. Anyway, yeah, it'll process. I must say. Wow. So there's my completed reel. My reel was really messed up. Scott <laughs> said so. How was your reel? I'm trying too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad I could bring those. That was fun. That was good. So there we go. Okay, considering Phil and I didn't know what the frig we're talking about. I had no idea what we were gonna do, so yeah. <laughs>
Well, I, I'm glad my surprises work. 